What's up? How you doing? It's time for the Wolf Dead Podcast. I hope you're well. I am just fine. Will, how you doing? Oddly hungry. I don't know why. I had you... dinner. I ate. But I'm like nashi. Would, would you? Nashi? That's, that's a phrase. Look it up. Would you like some crumble cookies? Tempting. No, thank you. We have a show to do. Oh, okay. Fine. We have a feature packed <laughs> show for you today. We've had to cut things from the list. That's, That's how, something yeah. we never do. Yeah. And we they were they just... were good topics, I must say. You, okay. you pulled you Well, you guys are gonna miss out on a great <laughs> show because we don't have time for all yeah. that. Uh you something's weird here. You have you noticed? Yes. You're using an a Lenovo right now. I am not using my MacBook that I usually use. Uh I'm doing a video this week where I use my Lenovo Legion Go as my main computer. Oh, so you're like I'm, not, I'm in, baby. Okay. I'm all you're in. You're not even taking a break just for the two hours. I can't. <laughs> I got to do the video. So then, like, when it comes to the gazeo. You know, I mean, we're streaming on a, another computer. Right. So peek behind the curtain. After the show ends, Bob goes over to the computer over here, and he, like, writes the description. He, like, edits the thumbnail yeah. if he needs to. You got to do all that from there? Yeah, I'm fucking going to plug it in <laughs> over there. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to plug this in. Or at least you're gonna plug it in. No, I want to see you do it off. Of the <laughs> no, screen. I'm not gonna do that. I've been like editing and stuff off of here. Jesus it's been a goddamn nightmare. <laughs> I'm sure you'll explain in your video, but like, why that one? Why not the the RG Ally? Because it has the biggest screen. Okay. And also, uh, I could plug in an external GPU. Uh, Got it. In, in the in the little thing. Got it. Uh, mostly though, the screen is just really big. Got it. Uh. You know, it hasn't been as bad as I was expecting it to be. Right. But I miss my MacBook. Of course. Dearly. Yeah. Uh, anyway. Oh, just a feature packed show for everybody. Oh, you know what? I forgot to log into Streamlabs. So I can't uh, see any notifications. <laughs> I so got... I got to type. I got to I gotta <laughs> press over here. I could use the on screen keyboard, but. Oh, Jesus. I have a little. I have a little thing here. I'm glad you have type. like a, a secondary keyboard because on screen keyboards on these fucking things. Are bad. Yeah, it's terrible. <laughs> uh, and you know what? So this is like a little tiny foldable Bluetooth yeah, keyboard. Yeah. It's split, which I don't mind. Yeah. But I'm realizing the B key mm -hmm. is on the left. Okay. That means there's only N and M on the right. Oh, yeah. That, that I typed that with my right hand, turns right. out. And I'd imagine most people do. Yeah. I don't know if you're supposed to. All right. Well, while you log in, I have Streamlabs open, so I can say... Uh, thank you to Seth Film Switch, uh, resubscribe for 26 months. Uh, boys, what's an easy, relatable way I can describe a PC handheld to someone like my parents? Tell them it's a much worse laptop. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's like, uh, it's a Game Boy that runs Windows. Yes, that's probably the best way to do it. There yeah. you go. Game Boy meets laptop. I guess yeah, you'd say. yeah. Uh, okay. Who uh, was that? Strong. Seth yeah, Seth film. Strong one with the six months. Uh, Pike plays games. Thank you for the four months. Wops realized I had forgot to sub this month. Lol. Well, it's a good thing you remembered. Yeah, or else we would have murdered you. Yeah. And uh, Dark Type for the 36 months. Oh, thank you so much. Thank you so much. Uh, and over on the other stream, uh, Farmer Gooch with five bucks. Thank you so much. Uh, anyway. Uh, what? Is the news that we're talking about this week? Well, uh, we have to talk about Switch Two rumors, of course. Yes, of course. Uh, do we have specs? We'll see. We'll discuss it. Uh, more Nintendo drama. Uh, yeah, they, they won the Joy-Con lawsuit. Yes, I'm curious to get takes on that. And they uh, uh, they're removing the Twitter integration, but everybody is. Yeah, and that is a whole discussion. Apparently, that's news. Uh, we got a new handheld coming from Ioneo. Of we course, we got new Sony CEOs. Uh, CEOs. We, yeah, two of them. Uh, two people to be mad at. Uh, we got EA BS. We got Marvel Rivals BS. Um, yeah, I didn't even know that was... Well, it's, a, yeah. it's an alpha or something. Yeah, and then uh, we got a whole lot of follow-up on what's going on at Microsoft between the closure of uh, Tango Gameworks and Arcane. Yes. And, like, you know... Basically, is the, or is there going to be a, another Xbox? I don't, I don't think so. Beat him ups in the chat says Will looks really good today. Very handsome. Also, hi Bob. Thanks. Really? Because like, 
I'm like stressed out getting over here because I'm trying to put the kids to bed before I left. That was not easy. So I feel like a maniac. <laughs> also, Wolf Den Dad, congrats on the Wolf Den channel hitting 900,000 subscribers. Come on, people. Let's get it to a million so I can get the net jet to the wind tower suite. It's not like when you hit a million, like it just shows up at your door. No, it, when you hit a million, uh, they give you a bag of money. Oh, really? Yeah, YouTube oh. gives you a bag of money. They come over and they say, congratulations on the mill. Here's a sack of money. <laughs> so because you exposed Windows, that- Windows, yeah. Windows though. So because you exposed that secret. Oh, is that, is that part of my NDA? I think so. I'm so not supposed to so now that? you're just going to get your legs broke. Uh, and dad's never going to get that. By the yet. YouTube buff. Yeah. Uh, all right, let's just go right into the, the first topic. Now, yes. I usually, uh, what I do is I cast my MacBook screen. <laughs> over to the streaming computer why are you laughing i'm gonna i'm casting my lenovo screen it's right there i'm i'm laughing what's in, funny i'm laughing in preparation <laughs> for the nightmare that this show is it's gonna right be there. uh resolution is a little wonky and i can't crop out a lot of the, the ads i'm so sorry okay all right, the Nintendo Switch was a runaway success thanks to its design, which allowed uh, it to be enjoyed both as a handheld and as a console docked to your TV. The gaming console was launched in 2017 and is desperately due for a refresh. Nintendo has confirmed a successor will be announced soon, and now new leaks have uh, have merged that have emerged that give us an early idea of what the specs of the Switch 2 could be, uh, how it could measure up against its predecessor, and what its launch timeline could be. Another issue I have is that I can't read the chat while I show something on screen. <laughs> uh, community members at Family Boards, a discussion forum uh, for Nintendo games and consoles, have been tracking shipment and custom data between Nintendo, NVIDIA, and other companies in an attempt to find hints of the Switch 2 specifications. Uh, Family Boards forum member uh, Lick, L-I-C, uh, claims to have analyzed the various shipment listings and arrived at the, these possible specifications for the Switch 2. All right, hold on. Fami boards? Yes. L-I-C. Yeah. Where's my whiteboard? Uh, I don't oh, know. Here. You have to add to the whiteboard. Yeah. Uh, of uh, the whiteboard of Nintendo Switch 2 rumors. Yeah. So we know who's right and who's wrong. Yeah, so this is specifically the specs for the Switch. And this comes from the Fami Boards forums, uh, board member LIC. Should I should put LIC? I'm just going to put LIC. Okay. We'll have to, we'll have to just... I mean, I would put Fami Boards in brackets so like we know... It's just too small. Okay. <laughs> There's just no room. All right. Uh, so the specs. What are the specs? Let me Part of the down. leak, the Nintendo Switch 2 could have 12 gigs of RAM, uh, coming from uh, 2x 6 gigabytes LPDDR uh, 5x modules capable of seven uh, 7500 MTs uh, per uh, was that mega transfers? Well, I'll read it for you. Okay, <laughs> give, me, give me give me one. All right, second. just make sure you put on your reading glasses on that screen. <laughs> Two times six gigabytes of LP. Where are you? LP DDR 5x RAM. Yeah. Uh, seven thousand five hundred MTs. Uh, transfer what is speed. MTs? <laughs> uh, mega transfers. Okay. <laughs> I don't know. I have no idea. Um, further, the internal storage could be 256 gigabytes of UFS 3.1 storage. Uh, 256 gigabytes, light years more yeah. storage than a Nintendo Switch <laughs> right usable. now. Usable. Yeah, almost usable. Yeah. You can get probably three games on there of the, of the, yeah. Nintendo, of the future Nintendo Switch. Or 50 games. Nintendo first party games because they know what they're doing. <laughs> You're right. So you know what? That sounds like a little, but in terms of Nintendo, yeah. that's not so bad. Mm-hmm. Uh, it may be tempting to compare these numbers uh, to existing or past consoles, but a fair comparison uh, with just this data set alone will not be possible. Uh, so we'll refrain from uh, raising your hopes too high uh, or dashing them, uh, depending on your ex expectations. Uh, Leaker Centro Leaks is highlighting some more information, suggesting that the console, uh, suggesting that the console and possibly the controllers will feature a built-in microphone. So, so Centro Leaks, mm -hmm. they kind of just uh, conglomerate all. They congregate all of the leaks. Got it. Uh, is it worth putting them on the board 
because they kind of just highlight other leaks. But it sounds like this is them saying that it's going to have a microphone. According to this article, it's the they tweeted out Central Leaks tweeted out themselves. Mm -hmm. Uh 12 gigs of RAM, the 12 gigs of RAM, the 256 gig storage. Uh seems like in their tweet it says seems like both the console uh will have a built-in microphone and maybe the controllers too. Yeah, why do they say that? How, how, I don't know. What's what's leading them to believe uh, that? Then the then they post um a Famiboards link in the next tweet. So I guess that's still coming from Famiboards. All right, I'll put Centro Centro leaks a built-in microphone in the controller and the consoles. Um and also that the Switch 2 could have an 8-inch display. Can't write and talk at the same time. Uh, eight inch display. Yeah. Okay. So Central Leaks is saying eight inch display. Yes. Eight inch. Just. Okay. That's all yeah. right. We already got a lot on, on yeah. this board here. Uh, and there's more. <laughs> oh, Jesus Christ. Okay. Uh, also, citing Brazilian streamer uh, TVPH. T V P H. Yes. Um, this is also, this is still from central leaks, but they're quoting uh TVPH okay. TVPH says the switch Two is planned to come out March, 2025. Okay. Uh, more, I, I could have fucking said that <laughs> <laughs> more information is coming this fall. I mean, this isn't like switch Two related, but more remasters will be revealed in the June direct. Uh, being planned as the last big Switch Focus Direct. Okay, I mean, that, Indie we World planned for that. August. Some third-party games will be confirmed for Switch 2 as early as the second half of this year. Uh, all right, so my take on that is that we're going to get some watchdog situations where you think so? they just say, this game's coming, and then it's going to be obvious that it's we, a Switch 2 game. This was one of the stories that you cut, but uh, Square Enix announced that they're going to have a... They're going to re... They're going to redo their platform strategy. Mm -hmm. They're going to, you know, because their past few games have been PlayStation exclusives and particularly Final Fantasy VII Rebirth was a PlayStation exclusive and didn't sell what they wanted it to. So they're going to focus more on multi-platform releases. And in their release, they said, we're going to release, we're going to release games on multiple platforms, including PlayStation, Xbox, PC, and Nintendo consoles. They didn't specify. Yeah. So... We're going to, uh, along your lines, we're probably going to start seeing situations like that. Yeah. Xbox, PlayStation, Nintendo consoles. Yeah. And I know that Nintendo is trying to focus on having some sort of uh, a nice lead into the next console. Mm -hmm. I'm hoping that things will transfer over. So yeah. when they say Nintendo consoles, it might be a situation where like a game like uh, Celeste mm -hmm. uh, is just fine on the regular nintendo uh -huh. switch and then we'll also play on the new right. nintendo switch. uh last thing uh reiterate that switch 2 will have physical and digital backwards compatibility with the original switch okay uh and wh who who's that that was that tvph that's still tvph backwards compatibility yeah did i write that down i mean i don't think so because like yeah, at this point everyone just we've yeah. all just agreed it's gonna have i'm just quoting him at a march 2025 launch which is something that we could have guessed. Yeah. But wh why is that being reported as a leak and not a guess? I think because <laughs> there was like a whole like tweet of like other things. Okay. You know, because we, we couldn't fucking guess that. More information in the fall, the direct stuff and. Right. So I want to go th over these. Uh... Is that it? Is that everything? Yeah. I, I want to go over the, the specs that we have here. All so right. we got 12 gigabytes of, of RAM. It's two. 64 gigabyte chips mm -hmm. uh which is a thing i think it's a thing with amd cards so if you have an amd uh, uh soc uh -huh. i think having two chips runs better okay what i've heard in the, in the past 12 gigabytes of ram is not a i mean it's a lot more than the Nintendo switch currently i think it only has four okay um dev kits have eight i yeah. think uh these things that I'm currently 16 that I'm currently using yeah. to do the show on has 16. Yes, yeah. you're right. Uh, 16 gigabytes of RAM. So that's a little more. Mm -hmm. So it's kind of uh, very Nintendo to not to, to, to it's very Nintendo to to limit the power that they're that yeah. they're putting out. 
everyone else is on 16 gigabytes they're gonna be like no we don't need 16 yeah um the the ram is kind of fast for what it is Mm -hmm. uh it's still not that fast Uh, Seventy five thousand mts is uh a little faster i think than like an asus rg ally it's not faster than a lenovo legion go Mm -hmm. um but it's still less than both of those yeah so that's not like amazing uh people are saying that like when i tweeted about this people were saying that it's not a big deal that it has less ram because it doesn't have it's gonna have its own proprietary operating system it's not gonna have windows on it true uh that's a lot of cope it's it's (laughs) it's yeah, it's going to have its own operating system, but it's Nintendo. They, yeah. they purposely uh, limit the hardware that they're using. Even if it is 12 gigabytes, this thing's going to use less than that because mm-hmm. because uh, they just they they, they they don't need it. They they yeah. they purposely like limit themselves. Um, they underclock their shit. Yeah, uh, 256 gigabytes of storage. I'm pretty sure this thing is kind of slow uh, by today's standards, uh, but it's still going to be you know like uh like in like ssd speeds yeah so it's it'll be fine uh hope i'm sure that there's going to be a micro sd card slot yeah so you can you know and like that's slow by today's standards micro sd card like when you're using a a steam deck yeah uh, people would say not to play your pc games off of the micro sd card slot honestly you barely notice a difference Mm -hmm. so i don't think that's that big of a deal uh eight inch display i think the whole unit is going to be bigger Oh, because it's going to yeah. have to be able to support all this extra stuff mm-hmm. that they're putting in there. And the Joy-Cons are going to be different, presumably, because the whole thing is going to be yeah. bigger. So 8-inch display makes sense. Probably not going to be an OLED because it's going to be the first generation. Yeah, definitely not an OLED. Yeah. And I'm sure it'll look just fine. Yeah. And, and it's probably going to be 1080p just so they can write a number down and say, look, it's better than yeah. we had before. Uh, I heard some people's throwing around the idea yet again that the dock will be able to upscale the the system but i don't think that's a thing yeah i don't know we were hearing that shit back when the original switch was launching and that that, that's just not something i think nintendo would do no i don't think it's anything it's something they're interested in honestly no uh what i would like to see is uh i want the whole thing to comply with power delivery standards yeah you can use regular charges and And any dock you want yeah well i don't know i think they Kind of to have some success having a proprietary. Well, dock. obviously, yes, but like, I yeah, I would love to see just a yeah, standard. Like, dock. I, you see, like the way, like you know, the Steam Deck and the PC uh, handhelds work, where you yeah. can just use any dock or any like USB hub for that matter. Yeah, I mean, uh, the Switch right now is a glorified Android device. Yeah. Uh, even if this is also an Android device, Android devices can use any dock. Yeah. So, uh. There's no reason to limit the 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 dock situation. Mm-hmm. It would be a lot easier for for everybody if they just yeah. let you use whatever dock. Also, Nintendo uh, had issues uh, keeping docks in stock. Remember, yeah, like, it was very hard to like yeah. get a dock. Like, period. Yeah, so it would be a lot easier if people can use yeah. third parties. I understand a little bit why they wouldn't want people to have third parties if you're concerned about. Uh, them like frying your your switch yeah but at the same but if time they comply with power delivery just say hey uh get a dock that complies with power delivery standards yeah, and you'll be safe i think the fact that they're using USB-C mm-hmm. and they made a point to say that they're using USB-C when they announced the switch all the way back yeah and they reap none of the benefits exactly of like they're sho- they're showing that they're willing to like comply with like industry standards so yeah. now just take the next step and fully comply to industry standards yeah that would be my hope yeah otherwise i'm not like impressed by the specs that we're getting so far it's like it it sounds pretty much par for the course this is like the minimum i would be willing to uh to be happy with using yeah there's like nothing here that like is like standout-ish you know it just seems like you know the next logical step it's a spec bump for the current nintendo switch yeah i mean people are saying it's gonna have like ps4 power and stuff and i mean it's just kind of I would be shocked if it did. People just want a an easy comparison. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's we're in a different time right now. It's yeah. it's it's the way games run is different than they did back then. Mm-hmm. Uh, so I'm sure it'll be able to play PlayStation Four games just fine, but yeah. it, it'll it'll play them in their own different way, kind of like how a PC handheld. Yeah. is. like these things are. Uh, would you say that this is as powerful as a PS4? Because it could play all of those games. Uh, I would say it's comparable i don't know about because it's different it's just different that's the thing yeah Yeah. so uh 
yeah, this all just seems reasonable. It uh-huh. all seems pretty reasonably Nintendo. I would hope that they take a little bit from the PC handheld space, uh, but they're Nintendo, and I don't yeah, think they're going to take too much. I'd be shocked if they take anything from the PC handheld They've space. probably been developing this for years uh, stubbornly in their own little way, and yeah. they're not taking anything from anybody else. A lot of this information came from suppliers. Uh, yeah. Uh, just large orders from other suppliers in there, and they're putting pieces together and saying, hey, it's probably Nintendo who's ordering yeah. millions of uh, millions of 8-inch displays, mm-hmm. you know? So yeah, that's your uh, Nintendo Switch 2 specs so far. On the board here, <laughs> we have Vandal saying there's a magnetic Joy-Con, mm-hmm. uh, which I heard a little more about, and they might be... Um, it's like an electromagnet that uh, is like a switch. Like, like, like you, 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 you put a current through it, and it switches. It turns the polarity on. Then you put uh-huh. a current through, it and it turns it off. So, okay, it like snap in and and out. Like you don't need. Yeah, it yeah. won't need to be constantly running electricity through it to, for it. it to connect. All right. So, Ma- Vandal Magnetic Joy-Con, LIC, twelve gigabytes of RAM, two hundred fifty-six gigabytes of storage. Centro leaks. We got a mic in the controller and the console, and also an eight-inch display. And we got TVPH March twenty twenty-five launch. And I guess I'll like if we have double yeah. leak stuff, I'll put the names next to. So that's everything. So when we get closer, we'll be able to see who's wrong. <laughs> uh, what else do we got here? We got an ad on my Lenovo Legion. <laughs> uh, we got Willow Davis the hundred bits, eight inches. People lie about that all the time. Ah, He's got a point. dick jokes. Smash Bro Joe's with the seven months. Love the show and need to catch it live more. Would probably be subscribed for 30 to 40 months now if I could resubscribe with Prime on mobile. That sucks, and it sucks yeah. that they make you do that. Clint Thurman. Thank you for the 100 bits. Uh, May Peco Peco. Thank you for the 12 months. And it's hard for me to look at YouTube on here, but I... Oh, we got $5 from Farmer, Farmer Goose. That's the one from the beginning of the show. Okay. Never mind, farmer. Fuck you. <laughs> um, oh, I closed everything. Oh, What's the no. next news? Uh, Nintendo is removing Twitter integration from the Switch. Uh, uh, it's official. All three major video game consoles are now getting rid of their integration with Elon Musk's social media platform, Twitter. That's what it's called. On Wednesday, <laughs> Nintendo became the last of the big gaming companies to announce that gamers would no longer be able to post directly to Twitter via the Nintendo Switch gaming console. Other Twitter-related functions would be dropped as well. Just read the tweet that Twitter tweeted. Oh, they tweeted back? Did you see that? No. I thought the article would have that. No, they have the tweet from Nintendo. So Twitter quote tweeted it. I could find it. Okay. Uh, Nintendo said, as of June 10th, 2024, it will no longer be possible uh, to post screenshots or videos to Twitter uh, from the Nintendo Switch's album or send friend requests uh, to social media users via the friends suggested feature oh yeah that's all they said uh and then twitter gaming so x gaming tweeted the gaming community is one of the largest and most vibrant communities on our platform and we are dedicated to enhancing and supporting gaming related features as part of nintendo's planned discontinuation of sharing content to x from the nintendo switch from june 11th users will need to download switch gameplay media blah 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 They said, our partnership with Nintendo remains strong, and we are working together to ensure a smooth transition for all users. We will continue collaborating with partners to bring new and exciting experiences to our global gaming community. Now, if that sounds like a whole load of bullshit, that's because it is. There's no way that they are talking to Nintendo (laughs) about this. They said, we worked together with Nintendo through this process to ensure API access for this integration, but ultimately it was a product decision made by Nintendo. Again, calling a load of bullshit because they even got community noted on their own platform. I <laughs> got it. Get got, idiots. Uh, they said, the community note says, this is in direct response to X changing their API. Specifically, X is changing companies up, X is charging companies upwards of $40,000 or more per month to access its API. Sony's PlayStation and Microsoft's Xbox already removed integration with X last year. 
And that's the first yeah. thing I thought of. I, yeah. Everybody knew this when, when Musk took over and started charging everybody for API access mm -hmm. and then all of the, the uh, external Twitter apps and yeah. all of the other things that were great that it were integrated with Twitter so well, they all started just falling apart yeah. because they all had API access for free. And that includes the consoles yeah. and, and sharing, being able to directly share stuff on social media mm -hmm. from your consoles. Uh, that API access would cost upwards of $40,000 per month. Month. Why would Nintendo pay Why that? would any company in their right mind charge, like, like yeah. pay that much for... I guess Twitter's idea here is that uh, they're going to want to be able to post on social media so you can buy an Xbox for that social button. The social button was a big... Uh, selling point yeah, I was gonna on say, all yeah. of the consoles in yeah. two, in in the in the PlayStation when did, Four era. Yeah, when did the PS Four come out? Twenty thirteen. Yeah. yeah. Yes. So in twenty thirteen on that share button to share it to all the social media apps, that was like the big revolutionary thing of that yeah. generation. And now Facebook sucks. Nobody uses that anymore. Twitter's you know a sinking ship. And like, there's really just Twitch and YouTube now. Yeah. That, like, and that's really all people like share their media to anyway. Yeah, people just straight up live stream yeah. it to those. Uh, so, I guess Twitter saw it as they need us in order to share things. Right. And these companies are like, no, no. we are platforming them. Yeah. We're putting them on our consoles. Nintendo well, sold 140 what million yeah. consoles? <laughs> why would they want to pay? Why would they want to give place or, or, or why would they want to give Twitter a piece of that platform i think what happened was elon musk and a ketamine bender okay <laughs> bought twitter for 44 billion dollars much more than it was worth yeah. so he is currently in debt to a lot of people because that wasn't all his money he like borrowed a lot of money well yeah he, he has to so, borrow money because all of his money is in assets right so he has to pay all his creditors back and he figured the best way to do it was to jack up prices everywhere for everything. Well, Twitter was, I don't want to say in the red, but they were uh, not profitable. Really. Right. So he's trying to find ways to make them profitable. And he's using like middle school logic. Yeah. <laughs> to like, oh, we gave everybody the API. They're all just using it. Yeah. Let's just charge them. Meanwhile... Everyone's just not going to use it. If yeah. it's not free, they're just not going to exactly. use it. And that's why your platform was so popular. Yeah. Because API access was free. You could access it from anywhere. Mm -hmm. Now you're limiting the amount of people who can access your platform. People are just going to stop using it. Yeah. Absolutely fucking so, dumb move. Good job. How's your Cybertruck doing? Idiot. I think it looks cool. It, I think it looks cool. What the hell is wrong with you? I saw it drive the other day. I was like, that's pretty fucking it cool. Looks, it looks like an, an N64 car. <laughs> yeah! I love the N64! <laughs> so do I! I don't want to drive a car from it. I would love to. That sounds fucking awesome. I don't awesome. want to drive a car from it where the accelerator gets stuck and like because I, the glue is faulty, where the door handles are like razor sharp, it it'll cut your legs. The least practical car. It's the dumbest car. I don't want one. But it looks pretty cool. Oh, my God. I support the idea of the look of I, that car. No. That is that is the the Homer car from the episode of The Simpsons where Homer meets his long-lost brother who runs a car company and yeah. says, you can make a car. And Homer makes the dumbest-looking car on the planet. Yeah. That car is <laughs> sick, though, too. <laughs> <laughs> that car is awesome. That car is awesome for a cartoon. I love wacky concept cars, and they never happen for real, and this one happened for real. My favorite tweet is somebody said it uh, looks like it came out of a sci-fi movie, and then Elon said, yes, it's the type of car Blade Runner would drive. And the quote <laughs> tweet was, does he actually think his name is Blade Runner? <laughs> the Blade the Runner. Blade Runner. <laughs> Holy shit, it's the Blade Runner. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Tell me you haven't seen the movie without saying you haven't seen the movie. <laughs> what are we talking about? Oh, yeah, Twitter. Uh, yeah. Twitter is just... It's my favorite social media platform, and it's becoming less and less it so. It sucks, man. Yeah. And, like, it's so, like, sad. And, like, Blue Sky is boring. There's mm -hmm. nothing going on over there. Yeah. 
Threads is okay. I do like Threads a Shout lot. Shout out to Charlie Fenn. I don't hang out on Threads too much. I forget. But every other night, I'll like go to it. I forget I have Threads until I'm on Instagram, which I don't even like. You know, I never go on Instagram. I'm, on I Inst Instagram. I'm only on Instagram to look for memes. And like, I'll see like, hey, look what's posting on Threads. And I was like, oh, that's right. I have Threads. I go over to Threads. And it's like, oh, this is like if Disney made Twitter. Mm -hmm. It's like a family friendly <laughs> version of Twitter. My threads is uh, a lot of photography stuff. Yeah. Which is weird because that should be Instagram. Yeah. But my Instagram is all uh, Asian restaurants in New York City mm -hmm. and, and coffee shops in yeah. New York City. And on, on like the reels. Right, right, yeah. So, yeah, I miss Twitter. <laughs> <laughs> uh, what's, what's, what, we did that story. Yeah. Uh, we got Caleb Fox, 22 months. I was going to say thanks for the countless hours of entertainment. I, what did I hit? <laughs> what did I hit? I was going to say thanks for the countless hours of entertainment, but then I realized my podcast, the app, keeps track of my listed time. So thanks for the 395 hours of entertainment. Holy shit. Jesus Christ. Thank you yeah. for the 22 months. <laughs> and Willow Davis with the 100 bits. Uh, you got 40 hours to get Dark Souls, uh, 50% 50 50 off on Steam. Uh, get to it. Dark Souls. Yeah. No. Yeah, I don't want to do that. I don't want to play Dark Souls. Yeah. It doesn't uh, sound like fun. No. Uh, all right. Next up, we got Nintendo wins the Joy-Con Drift lawsuit. Let's keep the Nintendo train going yes. real quick. Uh, this is a... This is a tweet. Yeah, I just put a tweet from S S Stefan? Steven. Steven Tatilla. Uh, it says, new five years of efforts to sue Nintendo over Joy-Con Drift have all been ended with a whimper. Plaintiffs, meaning parents and kids, and defendant Nintendo in the two main class action claims in the United States filed in 2019 and 2020. They agreed last week to call for their dismissal. And there's a legal document. Yeah. I don't want to read that. It just says... Uh, they hereby dismiss this action with prejudice, which means it cannot be put up to trial again. Yeah. Uh, and on the merits with each party to bear its own costs and expenses. Uh, this sucks because, yeah. uh, I mean, like, class action lawsuits are stupid in one way where uh, it's just a way for lawyers to make a lot of money yeah. because it's not like you know if you had in, like you had an issue with your joy con drifting yeah. and you sent it back you would probably qualify for yeah. some money if, if we won this class action lawsuit and you would probably get three dollars yeah yeah but on the other hand it's a way to hold uh companies accountable because that comp even though will would only get three dollars right the company would have to owe uh people like Will and the government and everything, millions and millions and millions of dollars. Mm -hmm. And you know, when companies have to spend millions of dollars, they're not happy about it. Yeah. So uh, that's a good way to get company, to, to prevent companies or to make them not want to fuck up this badly. Yeah. Uh, and they just dismissed it. Uh, I would assume the reason for the dismissal is just that the lawyers who were taking on this class action lawsuit decided this is taking too long and we're spending too much of our time on this. Let's just, yeah, let's just it's, it. that sounds like it because like this, yeah. this is something that like should have gone. It should have been in and out. You know, there's, there's clearly a problem. Nintendo didn't like realize it initially. Nintendo like accepts the, the fine or whatever. And like just ends it and like promises to work towards a better, you know, joy con, but no, like they kept fighting it for years and to put an end to like try to like sweep it under the rug. And they essentially did. They like dragged it out long enough that like people like forgot about it and also learn to live with it. You just accept that Joy-Con drift is going to happen. Yeah. So Nintendo did say that they'd fix Joy-Con drift for free, which yeah. I'm sure uh, made it harder to uh, for lawyers to prove that there was negligence. Mm -hmm. um, but Nintendo did try to say that nothing was wrong and also they're still selling the same fucking yeah. Joy-Cons. Um I was trying to see if the FTC ever did anything about it. Yeah. Cuz that's their job. Yeah. You know, their job is to regulate this stuff. It shouldn't be put on to law just random lawyers who want to make yeah. a quick buck. 
that's a whole nother problem in itself. Mm-hmm. Uh, but I found this article from IGN. All the lawsuits Nintendo is facing over joy Uh So I guess it's more than one. Uh, Diaz versus Nintendo of America, which I think, is, one... I think is one of the ones that is being dismissed. The judge granted Nintendo's motion to compel arbitration, yet denied its request to have the case dismissed. The one that Steven Totillo... Uh, tweeted about was AC a minor uh by and through his guardian Maria uh Carbaljal versus Nintendo. Okay. Yeah. So we also have Diaz versus Nintendo of America, which I guess is still going on. Sanchez versus Nintendo of America. Um claimed unlawful conduct by Nintendo uh related to its marketing and selling of yeah. Joy-Con controllers. Specifically this suit contains seven claims for relief citing Violations of California's unfair competition law, false advertising law, the aforementioned Magnuson Moss Warranty Act, and the Song Beverly Consumer Warranty Act. And this current status is Nintendo has filed a motion to transfer the case to the U.S. District Court. Uh, This motion will presumably be granted. Uh, So this is going to go up the chain, I guess. Uh, Sanchez versus Nintendo was dismissed in 2022. Okay, so this is not up to date. Mm-hmm. Uh, Carbajal versus Nintendo of America, filed in 2020 uh, in the United States District Court of Western District of Washington, Seattle, which is where Nintendo is based. Uh, unfair, deceptive, and or fraudulent business practices. Uh, and they filed a motion to compel arbitration. Blah, blah, blah. And there's, I guess, other countries too. Yeah, I mean, probably. And then this article just mentions the 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 Nintendo's EULA, which says you cannot file a class action right. lawsuit against them, which is which should not count. Yeah, <laughs> that's a whole nother thing we need to uh, mm-hmm. fight against is end user license agreements. We have to yeah. stop trying to pretend like that's like an actual like legal standing. Yeah, because nobody's reading that shit. You can't put stuff in writing like that that is not legal yeah. to begin with. <laughs> All right. Uh, so that's sad to hear. Yeah. It sucks that the onus of uh, making sure companies don't do things that are anti-consumer, the, the, the onus is on just random lawyers who just, who just yeah. decided they wanted to make some money. I mean, the only thing we can hope now is that, like, for the Switch 2, like, Nintendo has figured out Joy-Con Drift so that they don't do it again. Maybe the Hall Effects is the answer. Maybe, like, Nintendo will create because they're not going to license it maybe they'll create their own so that like it doesn't yeah i'm willing to bet that the nintendo switch 2 will not have hall effects you don't think so i think that nintendo is gonna just be stubborn once again (laughs) and just just yeah just do their own thing and just never acknowledge joy country Mm because again that would also uh they would not want to admit that they had a problem right the new joy cons will be completely different but uh, I don't know if they're going to say specifically that their whole effect. Mm-hmm. Penology in the chat says, class action lawyers don't charge, so it's definitely them giving up. They get the bank on the settlement? Mm. Yeah, no, that's what I mean. Like, yeah. they make money on the settlement. So, yeah, it's them giving up because they just said they're, they're spending too much time on it. Right. They want to get the other thing that could have made them a quicker book. Mm-hmm. Um... All right. Well, anyway, uh, is that everything? Yeah, that's it. Everything until this, baby. Backlog! 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 Oh, it's backlog time. And hey. guess what? I added all my Steam games. Uh-oh. I didn't add all my Switch games yet. Yes. But I added we have more games that oh, I Oh wow. Yeah, that's it. It gets it keeps growing. It keeps growing. And it's gonna keep growing the more games come out. Because every game we've ever bought, uh going back to when we were little ins to now that we're old ass men, every game we've ever bought, we put into an Excel spreadsheet uh to catalog them. And today we're gonna pick one at random and talk about it, regardless of whether or not we've played it. Now scroll to the bottom. I didn't sort it correctly. Okay. No, I I, I sorted it. Oh, okay. I so what, it, yeah. well, how many do we have now? Uh, I gotta scroll all the way to the bottom. This nine something. Nine hundred and fifty nine. Damn, I did a lot. 
Uh, you're looking at number 865. Okay. Ooh, this might be one of the new games. 865, and that is... Uh, okay. Sonic the Hedgehog, the original for the Genesis. Wow. Uh, it's specifically the the three six the one I got on three sixty. Oh, okay. Yeah. So it's it's Sonic the Hedgehog one, the original, the one that started it all. We had previously talked about the Game Gear version of the game. Oh, okay, interesting. But now we're talking about the actual Sonic the Hedgehog. Game. So was there anything different about the Xbox three sixty version? No, it's just a port. Just a port? Yeah, it's just Okay, because this game has been ported a billion times. Yes. And we have every version. We have just about <laughs> every version of it, yes. I don't know which version we don't have. We have every version. I I don't have the Sega Ages version on Switch. Oh, I do. I, you do. I definitely okay. do. Yeah. Wait, I wait, that? wait. No, not Ages. Yeah. I don't have Ages. Yeah. There's, there's the Genesis version. There's the 360 version. There's there's the one on GBA which we don't have, but I don't want because that game's butt apparently. Oh, the original Sonic yeah, on it's GBA. Called, it's called Sonic. It's called Sonic the Hedgehog Genesis, and it's a port of Sonic from Genesis onto GBA. But never heard the, of that. The screen size is like shrunk down. The frame rate is like in half. So like it's just an all around unplayable mess. Okay. Yeah. Uh, we have a lot of other ones. We have like yeah. Also, is is it in Sonic Origins? Okay. I have that too. Yeah, so there you go. Uh, we have, yeah. And Sonic Origins is one of the good ones. Sonic Ages is one of the good ones because they had the yeah. spin dash to, yes. to the game. Yeah. Uh, Sonic, the, or the original Sonic the Hedgehog, unfortunately, uh, is not that great. Because, no. Mostly because it doesn't have that spin dash. Yeah. It feels like it's missing something when you oh, go yeah. back and play it. I'm sure at the time it felt fine because it's basically just a platformer. Yeah. But, uh, you want to be able to go fast immediately yeah. and you can't just pick up speed right away. You have to gain that speed through walking. So he walks so slow yeah. at first. So uh, I never liked the original Sonic. It, it's, we were huge into Sonic 2 and yeah, Sonic 3. Yeah, that's the thing. We started with Sonic 2. Yeah, so it was really hard for us to go back. Yeah, and like going back between Sonic 2 and Sonic 1 is like, a shell shock of the highest order because like sonic 2 you had this the spin dash was the big one that like changed everything that's like the manual in tony hawk once you got that you can't go back to tony hawk one because now it opens up a whole web of possibilities on how to play the game there was that there was the every zone had three acts instead of two which like made the game feel longer by comparison to the later sonic games and also, too... Well, the last act is usually just a boss battle, right? Right. Yeah. Well, no. No. The no? last act is a full level and then the boss battle. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. And then, like, to top it off, after Green Hill Zone, the levels, like, slow down considerably and they become more like traditional platformers. And, the and it's Green very hard. Yeah. 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 Green Hill Zone was, like, really the level that, like highlighted the speed and like the the whole selling point of sonic the hedgehog yeah it's easy to build momentum on yeah. green hill zone but then as you get to the later levels you are just slowly platforming and it's just yeah. not that fun yeah it's it's very it's a very weird game to like go back to and play the later versions that do add the spin dash yeah. to the game help out considerably yeah but you're still dealing with of uh, a predominantly slow platforming game after the first level you're dealing with uh longer levels that like you know break up that like don't really have good pacing to them yeah uh you're you're also dealing with genuinely the worst special stages in the whole <laughs> in the entire series of sonic the Hedgehog. they reuse these special stages a lot and i don't know why they're terrible <laughs> they're not, they're they're not genuinely great genuinely the worst they're, special they're stages not that good. they've never been fun they're always like cumbersome and confusing you know, and I, that's why people don't want to collect the Chaos Emeralds. What is it, the second level? Literally just slowly standing on a rock going yeah. through lava. Yeah, like, I don't understand it. Because, like, even back in the when this came out, mm -hmm. like, the whole selling point was Sonic go fast. Sonic, it's all about speed. Mario, he's, he's, got, he's got polio legs. He can't walk too fast. <laughs> but, like, Sonic, Sonic's cool. He, he runs fast. And, like, they show it in the first level. And then, like, immediately it's like, go oh, platform slowly. This stupid. guy was, this guy's literally waiting for a platform. I to know. Appear. Like, it's incredible <laughs> that, like, 
we forget so much. Like they invented a marketing term for the Genesis because of how fast he is. Yes. Yeah. Like, but like, no, this is a, this is a slow ass game. Yeah. I mean, the the whole thing with Sonic being fast has always just been a marketing thing because he is just as fast as Mario. <laughs> yeah, but by the same time, like later games in the series, like do a much better job. They of focus like... on it and they make you feel like he's going really yeah. fast, and and they give you tools to go fast. But I wouldn't really mind if the game was mostly a platformer because I see Sonic as mostly a platformer. I, when people say like, uh, people criticize early Sonic games because uh, uh, it, it they're always running, going fast, and then they hit yeah. a brick wall or something, or they right. hit an enemy and it really screws your momentum. I always see Sonic as just a straight up platformer. I'm not always going fast. I'm usually just just having a good time. But there's moments in like Sonic 3, for example, where it makes you feel like you gain momentum every once in a while and it feels really good along with the good level design and the good platforming that happens in between that when 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 the game slows down this doesn't have much of that no i would say like a good sonic game is one that does go fast but like it's a it's fast enough where your reflexes still work so like you you hit top speed and you, you can see the enemies coming and you can react to it accordingly. You know, some of the bad Sonic games, like, will just put up, like, an enemy, like, where you can't react in time, you know? But, like, a good Sonic game will give you just enough time and just enough uh, resources to get through just about anything. This game, you know, you're, you're going, like, two miles an hour, so you got plenty of time to, yeah. you know, get through everything. I would argue it's just that a Sonic game makes you feel like you have the the fastness yeah not necessarily that you're actually going fast yeah um later versions of this game added stuff like the spin dash but also there's some that give you uh other characters that you can play like i yeah. think in sonic origins you could play a yeah, bunch you of characters everyone, and yeah. it, that's sick that yeah. that adds a lot more to, to to the game but this is still my least favorite of the genesis sonic games oh absolutely and i mean it's the oldest so uh, it makes sense that yeah it, but i mean like i guess at the time like this is 1991 you know we didn't really like i don't think the super nintendo came out in america yet mm. so like we didn't see anything like this the the bright colors the the sense of speed the music the music in this game like for all its flaws the music in this game still slaps yeah it's like, still good yeah still good music. so there's nothing you know nothing wrong there um and it, it, yeah like this this was the game that put the genesis on the map this started the very first console war this like sold an entire system I th believe it's still the best-selling game on the system, like, today. Mm -hmm. I, so, like, it's it's a landmark game. It's an important game. More than anything, it sold a character. Because yeah. Sonic has always been popular, not because the games are amazing, but because the character is amazing. Yeah. The character is such good character yeah. design and world building and stuff. Uh, but it does have some great games. We are genuinely Sonic fans. Yes. We're not those that say that Sonic doesn't have a good game. Yeah. Some of the games are amazing. Yes. This is not one of them. Exactly. It's yeah. a, it's a very hard game to go back to and play, uh, especially nowadays with like all the other better games that have come after it. Like I would recommend Sonic Two in a heartbeat. I would recommend Sonic Three and Knuckles in a heartbeat. Mm -hmm. Even like the modern versions that add like the spin dash and the extra characters, stuff, I don't know if I would recommend it because like everything else about the game. Yeah, everything else is just so much better. Yeah. So why did you get the one for the for the Xbox 360? It was I think it was on sale for like a dollar. The whole series was okay. on sale for like a dollar, so I figured, why not get them? And they're playable on Xbox One and Series X. So like mm -hmm. I ha now I have them. So if I want to just like boot it up, I don't have to like dig out the Genesis or like any other system. They're just there, so I just go right into it. We've talked about a lot of Sonic games here. We have all of them. All of them. Yeah, <laughs> basically all of them. Um, I would like to issue a correction for last week's backlog. Okay. I called uh, Solid Snake Naked Snake. And I would like yes. to apologize you, you profusely did that. to the Metal Gear Solid community. Yeah. The one who called me out is Snake Eater in our chat. Oh, His name yeah. is Snake Eater. Be very <laughs> upset with me i am very sorry uh That's, i i should have corrected you i should have been better about correcting you because technically he's old snake in that game true yeah so true. i will also i will also fall on the sword on that one but it's mostly bob's fault thanks for watching <laughs> the backlog everybody uh 
watch the other episodes where we have a bunch of Sonic episodes. We we have a bunch of Sonic episodes. We have more Sonic episodes to come, but maybe next week it won't be Sonic. Yeah, maybe. <laughs> uh bye. Bye. All right. All right. Uh Something else I wanted to say. Oh, there's new Nintendo Switch Online games, apparently. Oh. They just dropped. Oh. Breaking news. Breaking news. Hello. Where is it? Uh, Why do you do this? Oh, I gotta use this stupid touch screen. Oh, I got it. This keyboard's annoying. All right. Free classic games are now available to Switch Online members, and they're all for the Game Boy. It is Ooh. Super Mario Land. Finally! Alleyway and Baseball. <laughs> Super Mario Land is the one everyone's been given Nintendo shit for. Yeah. Because uh, it's stupid that it hasn't been on. It Nintendo should Switch have Online. been a launch li- uh, title. Yeah, there's it, it would cost them nothing. I don't, I don't understand. Actually, what, what, all three of these should have been launch titles because I believe those are like one of the first like 10 G- uh, Game Boy games to ever be released. Now, Super Mario Land, not a great game. No. But uh, it's pretty important to the Game Boy's uh, uh, library. Yeah. So it doesn't make sense why it wasn't on there it does it, you know regardless of like quality of the game it's a mario game yeah it should just be there i wonder if there was emulation issues with that i game. doubt it because i don't think the game was developed well <laughs> <laughs> so, so there, there might have actually been some technical we, issues. i mean we've been emulating G, uh game boy games since the 90s i don't yeah. see how there could be an emulation issue with nintendo has like released this in emulation like millions of times before i don't That's see how they're true. gonna be, i i don't understand like the release schedule of switch online like they slowly roll these games out yeah you know like, yeah n- now we're just gonna be waiting for the second super mario land yeah and then here's baseball baseball this looks exactly like the one for game gear that we used to play. <laughs> all right uh anything else spank wise thanks for the, uh gifting a sub and that's it uh, all right, next news. Aya Neo has a handheld. Oh, there's, boy. There's no, like, big article for this. They just, Aya Neo just tweeted out, here it comes. Aya Neo Pocket DMG. Uh, and it's just the back of it. Right. That's what it looks like. Uh, they just said, let's enjoy the beauty of DMG on May 18th at 11 a.m. Pacific time. Star eye emoji. And then they have a picture that says, Aya Neo Pocket DMG, vertical handhelds with a beautiful appearance. Real gamers, no gamers. <laughs> the hell kind of a catchphrase is that? Elegant and innovative, heart thumping, and lovable. So, like, I know Aya Neo mostly focuses on, like, handheld PCs. Yeah. This might be a PC handheld. Oh, my God. So it could, they started doing Android stuff. Yeah. So it, it could be an Android, and that would make a lot more sense. Yeah. But imagine if this is a PC <laughs> handle. I mean, it has... It Look at all, all that thermal. Yeah. Like, oh, that's all fan shit. So, like... I mean, but that could be because it's, like, you know, capable of emulating, like, higher-end uh, consoles like yeah. PS2 and stuff. Yeah. Because, like, all the... Like, Ambernick has an- some... Exactly. Has some yeah. devices that are big with big thermals yeah. that are just Android. So I don't think that necessarily means anything. But could you imagine if it's a vertical PC handheld? I can imagine because they're the same company that put out a dual screen PC <laughs> handheld. It's possible. Yeah. This thing's going to be a million dollars. Yeah, it's way too expensive. I'm yeah. I'm interested in this, what the size of it is going to be. We're not going to know anything until May 18th. Because the thing is, like, it's bad enough they named it the Pocket. There's already a very popular high-end retro gaming console that focuses on handheld gaming called the Pocket. Which will be a lot more pocketable than whatever this is. Yeah. This thing's going to be huge. But, like, how big are we talking here? And it's interesting because DMG is Dot Matrix, what, game? I believe so. Uh, that is the original Game Boy, yeah. the big one. So Pocket DMG is uh, an oxymoron. Yeah. It's two different things. So uh, they're just uh, saying buzzwords. Yeah. Uh, I'm going to get it. Of course. <laughs> but uh, I'm not happy about it. And I guess May- they just said May 18th at 11 a.m. Pacific time. I'm assuming that's when a Kickstarter will be out because this company has been around forever. And for some reason, they have to kickstart every single yeah. stupid thing that they do. 
Uh, dot matrix game, yeah. Okay. So uh, that's that. We'll mm -hmm. we'll hear more about it this weekend. Maybe we'll talk about it next week. Oh, it looks like there's a probably an SD card slot on the side. Hmm. All right, more about that next week, I suppose. Close tabs. <laughs> um. Next, let's talk about Sony's multiple CEOs. Sony will be replacing former PlayStation boss Jim Ryan with two CEOs, uh, Hideki Nishino uh, and Herman Hulst, the company announced. Uh, effective June 1st this year, Hideki uh, Hishino will be the CEO of Sony Interactive Entertainment's platform business group, and Herman Hulst will be the CEO of Sony's uh, studio business group, as revealed in the press release today. Um Hiroki Totoki uh, has been serving as the interim CEO in the wake of Ryan's retirement and will serve as chairman of Sony Interactive Entertainment in addition to his role as president, COO, and CFO of the Sony Group Corporation. Bro both Holst and uh, Nishino will report to Totoki. Uh, Sony Interactive Entertainment is a dynamic uh, and growing business that delivers incredible entertainment and experiences through the co uh, connection of content and technology. Totoki said in a statement, these two leaders will have clear responsibilities and will manage strategic direction uh, to ensure the focus remains on deepening engagement with existing PlayStation users and expanding experiences to new audiences. Uh, as senior vice president of the platform experience group, uh, Nishiro is the is already embedded in Sony's uh, in PlayStation's hardware and tech operations. In his new role, Sony says he'll continue to be responsible for technology, products, services, and platform experience, as well as overseeing third-party publisher and developer relations and commercial operations, including sales and marketing of hardware, services, and peripherals. Holst, meanwhile, uh, is currently senior vice president and head of PlayStation Studios. In addition to developing content across PlayStation consoles and PC, he's helped oversee the growth of PlayStation IPs across film and television through PlayStation Productions. Unsurprisingly, Sony's press release name drops HBO smash hit um, The Last of Us, uh, developed by PlayStation Productions in his new role. Holst will be responsible for development, publishing, and business operations of SIE first-party content. So does that mean he's going to be in charge of games too? Yes. Uh, so first party games. First party games. Yeah. And anything involving first party games, meaning movies and TV adaptations. Okay. Yeah. That, that's And then the other guy is mostly hardware. Mostly hardware, but also third party uh, relationships. Interesting. Yeah. That's, that's interesting. Um, yeah. I'm surprised that like, I understand like you got one guy with hardware, one guy with software. There should be another guy with third party relations. Right. Or yeah. why not have the first party guy also do the third party stuff? I would understand. I understand the the necessity to have a guy who just deals with third party companies yeah. because you want to. That's a different type of relationship. Yeah. That that you need to be more of a PR guy. Mm -hmm. You don't want to give them too much information, but you want to give them all of the tools to right. give you like a good product. Mm -hmm. With first party companies, you can give them everything. Yeah. Uh, and you don't have to wow them. You yeah. know, they already you already have them. Mm -hmm. And then uh, hardware. I mean, it's interesting that they separate the hardware guy, but uh, well, Nintendo used to do that. They used to their hardware and software divisions were like pretty separate. Yeah, and then they brought them all under one. Uh, okay. So Jim Ryan was such a big deal, and now they got two guys. <laughs> yeah, it takes two people to fill his shoes. I don't <laughs> think anybody liked Jim Ryan though, so it's no. And this is only America. No, it's all of Sony Interactive Entertainment. All of Sony. So Jim Ryan was all of Sony? No, it's in Sony Interactive Entertainment. Just the PlayStation. Right, 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 yeah. right, 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 right. Yeah. But that's still weird to me because that is a Japanese company. Right. Yeah. I mean, he still reported to a Japanese man. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But they gave all of PlayStation to an American guy? Yeah, they've done that. Yeah, it's just yeah. What's um after uh, who was the guy who ran it during the PS3 era? Into the PS4 era. I forgot his name. But, well, now it's a Japanese guy and an American guy. Yeah. So. Maybe that's why they're doing it. Maybe. Maybe that's why they're splitting. Oh, that will also make sense why uh, the hardware is a separate guy. Because that's a Japanese guy. 
that guy's going to be in Japan. <laughs> right. Making the hardware. Yeah. Making the hardware. And then you have an American guy because a lot of the first party studios are American. Yes. Okay. This is going to bother me. Who was the head of Sony PlayStation? One Jim Ryan's people? British, apparently? Yes. Who? Westerner, I guess you could say. I'm just, I'm just racist. Um, what? This is going to bother me. What the hell? He was the guy who was on stage. Jack Trenton. Oh, I yes. remember him. Yeah. yeah. He was a, Nobody liked him either. Well, no, like people didn't like him at first. And then when the PS4 came out, he was the one who was on stage who said, uh, yeah, there's not going to be any restrictions on used games. Uh, so there's that. Fuck yeah. you, Nintendo. No, <laughs> Xbox. Fuck you, Xbox. That's what it was. It's hard to keep track. Um, Sorry, I'm looking at that. It's okay. I know my chat is extremely tiny. <laughs> All right, I have no, I have nothing to say about uh, Sony getting a new guy. The Jim Ryan was fine. Uh, <laughs> I, people didn't like him. Well, he wasn't fine because he made like he was like, oh, most of our studios are gonna do live service games, like in the height of like the live service like crash, and now like Sony started to like change their business model to that, and then it started to go bad, so they had to try to change it back. Yeah. So. Yeah, I don't know what would have been different without him, but uh, he wasn't particularly great. I'll, yeah. I'll, uh, I'll, I'll concede to that. I think, honestly, I think Sony might like be a little like Sony like corporation might be a little mad at him for like being so like hands off of Microsoft buying Activision. What do you, you know, mean? Like he didn't fight hard enough to stop that from happening. What could he have done? What would he have done? He have, you know, made a bigger stink about it or something. A I don't stink know. in what way? I don't know. I don't know, man. Like <laughs> fucking go on the you know, the nightly news or whatever and be like, "Oh, Microsoft can't oh, like buy come campaign against yes, it." Cuz exactly. they they tried, they tried during the not, lawsuit. Not enough. Apparently. They could have tried to uh sway public opinion. Yeah. All right. Anyway, here's a story about EA wanting to put advertisements inside of your games, which they do already. Yeah. <laughs> they totally do that already. Uh, I think it was Mirror's Edge that had billboards of other a lot, shit. Most of their racing games have billboards of shit. They do the the sport Madden and NBA Live and like you know all all those games. They're they're riddled with advertisements. Yeah. So like, I think what they're talking about is like games where it doesn't make sense for there to be ads. Right. So let's read the article. Um. EA CEO Andrew Wilson uh, has revealed plans to harness the power of its game communities uh, and using advertising as a meaningful driver of growth for the company. In its latest financial report, Wilson fielded comments from investors advising uh, that whilst the megacorp needs to be very thoughtful about advertising given the many, many billions of hours uh, that are spent on its games, advertising has an opportunity to be a meaningful driver of growth for EA. To answer your question on advertising broadly, again, I think it's still early on that front. Um, and we have looked over the course of our history to be very thoughtful about advertising in the context of our play experiences. But the, again, the irony of reading this article while wow, there's so many ads. On oh, screen. yeah. <laughs> but again, as we think about the many, many billions of hours spent uh, both playing, creating, watching and connecting and where much of that engagement happens to be on the bounds of a traditional game experience, our expectation is that advertising has an opportunity to be a meaningful driver for growth for us. Uh, we will be very thoughtful as we move into that, uh, and we have teams internally in the company right now uh, looking at how looking at how we do a very thoughtful implementation inside of our game experiences. Uh, but more importantly, as we uh, start to build community. As we start to build community and harness the power of community beyond the bounds of our games, uh, how do we think about advertising as a growth driver in those types of experiences? In the same call to shareholders, uh, House said EA uh, was amassing its largest battlefield team in franchise history to work across connected multiplayer and single player experiences. Our teams have listened to the community, uh, have learned valuable lessons and are driving the future, Wilson said. Uh, Motive arms with the cutting edge frostbite technology and compelling storytelling is joining DICE, Criterion, and Ripple Effect to build a battlefield universe across connected multiplayer and single player experiences. It is the largest battlefield team in franchise history. So basically, they're just saying, yeah, we're going to continue to think about how we could put advertising in games. Yeah. They're not saying exactly how they're going to do it. Yeah. This spurred a lot of memes on Twitter of yeah. like, 
a gameplay moment. Specifically, it's like it's all the it's Jedi Survivor, Jedi Fallen Order, and like just an ad appears out of nowhere. You like like a non skippable YouTube ad, yeah. like that style ad. Yeah. Uh, it seems like that's not what they're trying to do. I'm sure it's not off the table for them. Yeah. But it seems like it's gonna be like how they already do it. How there's just a random sprite billboard in your game, or some bullshit like well, that. Well, I well again, I think I think the the question is twofold. Uh, the question is one: Is it gonna be? Are they gonna do that in games where it doesn't make sense? Because like if you're playing Need for Speed and you're driving through like a realistic looking city and you drive past the billboard from McDonald's, yeah, you'll notice it's a giant billboard yeah. from McDonald's. But that makes sense if you're playing a battlefield game where you're in world war two and you're walking down the streets of a bombed out Paris. Mm -hmm. And all of a sudden you see, you know, Duracell batteries, you know, that's pretty egregious. Or you're fighting a bunch of transformers and a truck full of Budweiser spills all over the street. Yeah. Like what happened in the movie transformers. Transformers, Yes. I guess this shit happens everywhere. It happens. Well, that's the thing. Like there's, there's good there's no good product placement but there's like product placement where like you're okay with and product placement where it's like blatantly obvious. well like the, our characters need to go to a burger place yeah who wants to be the burger place? right burger king do you want to do it or mcdonald's do you want to do it? who wants to give us more money like I, it makes sense in the story yeah but then when mcdonald's goes we'll do it but they have to say uh fucking Happy meals make me smile. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> you know, you like know. That, now you're starting to ruin yeah. the creative integrity. It, it, it's of the like, you know, they, they don't really do this that much anymore. But like the James Bond movies, like used to be like riddled with like product placement. Mm -hmm. And sometimes it would it would be subtle, like you know he's just shaving, and it happens to be like whatever razor blade was you know sponsoring the movie, and then it would be like on the nose where he would go to Q and get his gadgets and he would specifically drive a BMW Aston, uh, no BMW, whatever. Uh, your watch is a new Omega Seamaster X4, whatever. Your phone is a Sony Ericsson, blah, 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 where they just like lay out what all the yeah. products are with nice, you know, product shot of it. And like, that's like, all right, enough of this shit. Yeah. You know, I think in, the other thing I wanted to, uh, bring up was, uh, I forget which NBA 2K game it was. This is take two uh, uh, we're talking about now. But, like, this is the future could lead. Because, like, I think the most recent NBA 2K game had just straight-up commercials in it. Like, commercials you would see on TV. <laughs> yeah. Like, in the middle of, like, the game. I guess try to, like, replicate an actual basketball game. But, like, nobody wants that. Yeah. Like, we're, you're playing a video game. You don't have to, like, stop and go to an ad for State Farm that I can see on TV. Yeah. Game companies are complaining that games are costing more and more money to make. Mm -hmm. uh, so this is a way for them to supplement that so that we won't have to pay more for the game or so that we won't have to deal with DLC and stuff. Yeah. Except that that shit won't stop either. Yeah. They're gonna put ads in games and then they're also gonna charge us more for the game. Yeah. And then they're also gonna give us DLC that is required to, to get the whole experience. Yeah. So it's never gonna end. Yeah. 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 They need to just take a little bit of an L. If a game does bad, it's because you made a bad game. Yeah. You know, <laughs> just deal with it. All right. Uh, let's move on to what is it? Marvel Rivals. Yeah. Uh, so this has since been, uh, updated, but I'm going to just go ahead and read the original story. Okay. Uh, players and content creators have hit back at Marvel rivals, uh, for play test terms of service contract that prohibits players from making statements that are detrimental to the reputation of the game. Let's just, let's just go right to the tweet. Okay. Uh, this is Brandon Lard. Who says extremely disappointed in Marvel rivals, multiple creators asked for key codes to gain access to the play test and are asked to sign a contract. Uh, the contract signs away your right to negatively review the game. Many streamers have signed without reading just to play. Insanity. So Marvel Rivals is is Marvel's uh, Overwatch clone. Yes. It actually looks pretty cool. I want to try it. <laughs> it looks pretty cool. Uh, it's in beta right now, and in order to play the beta, you need to sign a little thing. Mm -hmm. uh, and it says part of the little thing that you need to sign 
It says, non-disparagement, the content creator agrees not to make any public statements or engage in discussion that are detrimental to the reputation of the game. This includes, but is not limited to, making disparaging or satirical comments about any game-related material, such as game features, characters, or music, and engaging in malicious comparisons with comp competitors or belittling the gameplay or differences of Marvel rivals or providing subjective negative reviews of the game. Uh, that obviously is going to be difficult for yeah. a streamer to do. You're streaming a brand new game that you, that you haven't played before mm -hmm. uh, for hours. You're probably going to say something about yeah. something in the game. Like, especially if it's like an early access or a beta yeah. release, like, it's not finished. Like there's going to be a bug and it might be a game breaking bug that upsets you. Yeah. It's going to get brought up. Also, it's just a huge uh, issue when there's, yeah, they make people sign something like this. It, it makes it seem like you've got something to, to hide. Yeah. And I'll say that this happens all the time. It yeah. just doesn't get caught. There's all of the time. There'll be a beta or something that has an end user license agreement or the only way to do the play test is to sign something like this. Yeah. There was a game last year that uh, was doing a play test and you couldn't stream it. Yeah. But I forgot what game it was. It was a very popular game and you, you just straight up could not stream it. I game. think Suicide Squad did that. Like, not, yeah. I'm, not that's they, not the game. They had an egregious thing yeah. that you had to sign. They actually, I think it was an, oh, it was freaking Wii. It was Nintendo Switch Sports. Really? When the play test came out, you could not stream at this and you cannot yeah. share any footage of this. Yeah. And I was like, fuck that. I'm streaming this. And yeah. I streamed every play test that they did yeah. and they didn't do anything uh, because they can't police everybody. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Like Suicide Squad, for some reason, like they were like holding back like the beta test footage and stuff. And like they said, like, you can't talk about it. You can't say anything. Then like when all the negative press started coming out, they're like, you know, we're like quickly. Oh, just say say good things yeah. about it, please. You know. Yeah, this happens all of the time. It's yeah. just uh, they got caught. Uh, I will say there was an update. NetEast, the publisher, um, have since like walked back the statement. They've sincerely apologized for the miscommunication and unpleasant experiences. Um, they are now working on a revised on revising the miscommunication terms and the commitment. Uh, the program will be shared uh, with every creator in a timely manner. Uh, Marvel Rivals is always welcome creators uh, join our community and create amazing content uh, together with us. Uh, content creators are respected not only as players, but as part of the community. Speaking of this, suge a suggestion forums for content creator program is being released through the Discord. Blah, 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 blah. The contract draft version aiming for long-term cooperation of the creators who are interested in Marvel Rivals. The development team hopes to have a more meaningful and consistent feedback suggestion and criticism through more in-depth cooperation. They got caught. Yeah. And, they, and they're now trying to say, oh, it was an accident. I honestly don't think this would have been an article if that tweet didn't, if, if yeah. people didn't see that tweet. Well, or, I think, you or, know, or it's good go that out. they tweeted it because yeah, more no, people need to know about this shit. More companies should get caught for dumb shit like yeah. that. But uh, I'm just saying it happens all the time and nobody says anything yeah. about it. So, uh, but no, it, it's it's good that they got caught in a revise a little bit. Mm -hmm. I haven't heard anything about the game. I don't know if it's good or not. It looks yeah, good. I don't know. I, yeah. It looks like I would want to play it. Yeah. But I haven't heard anything mm -hmm. uh, outside of that. Probably because people were afraid to talk about it. Yeah. Um... Okay, let's talk about how Ninte uh, Nintendo president Doug Bowser fought a, a man. <laughs> uh, recently spotted and documented by PK Lior on the LinkedIn in Lunatic subreddit. Can't believe that's a thing. Uh, about a week ago, Chad Rogers, a partner at public affairs agency uh, Crestview Strategy, posted a small rant and an AI image on LinkedIn about people using the seat in front of them to help them enter or exit a plane. He wanted to oh, make it clear a that plane people... Seat. Yeah. 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 Our parents do this. Yes. And that it bothers me. Though. <laughs> but they're old. They're yeah. old. So like, what are you supposed to? Yeah. I can't tell them not to lean on the seat in front of them. All right. So uh, Rogers posted, as you make your way to your seat, rise from your seat, navigate the center aisle, etc. A reminder, you do not have the right to touch another person's seat back. 
Uh, the seat on the, the seat in front of you is not there for you to stabilize or raise yourself. That's what the armrest is for. The seat you are in is yours. No other seat or seat back should be touched by you at any time. Uh, thank you for respecting the miracle of flight. Because because what happened if if you're not conscious that there's a person sitting in that seat that yeah. you're leaning on to get up or you using to get up, it snaps like a spring. Yeah, you pull it. And then you bing, and then yeah. that person gets launched forward. Now, for some reason, mm -hmm. Nintendo of America president Doug Bowser saw fit to respond to this. This man doesn't have a PJ. LinkedIn. This man doesn't have a private jet. This man, who did not take a picture with me at E3 one time, <laughs> responded and said, rather arrogant and entitled comment damn some people may be challenged moving to their seat uh physical limitation narrowness of seat seating areas etc uh that means if a passenger should need to support themselves getting in or out of a seat they should be as gentle as they physically can bowser well, then yeah they should be gentle but the they're not a lot of these people Bowser then pulled out the classic poster tool of a nice little passive aggressive ps at the end of his comment P.S. Where on your ticket purchase documentation are your rights, in quotes, to the seat back or other rules uh, you speak of, uh, you speak of declared? I, I do not. <laughs> I am not on this man's side. <laughs> that is, it's their seat. Yeah. Uh, Rogers responded. Okay. Uh, entitled would be indicating you own everything, not, uh, elucidated on the ticket contract manners are clear happy to help you help happy to help you out on them with the post uh seats are allocated by passenger in fact printed on all boarding passes i agree with roger bowser Rogers. responded uh one last time in the thread uh with manners are different from rights i do see the arrogance is still prevalent however have yourself a good day he's calling him arrogant yeah yeah, it's it is a manners thing. Like like it is a manners. You don't, thing, yeah, you you you're gonna bother somebody. Like somebody's potentially sleeping in front of you, and you're grabbing their seat and pulling it. Like I like look, you have like this much room yeah. between you and the person in front of you. There's not a lot of wiggle room on planes anymore. Like if you gotta like put your hand up on a seat. By like put your hand up on the seat, but don't be an asshole about yeah. it. Like use a gentle touch. You know, obviously, Bowser's not advocating for violently rocking the yeah. seat back and forth. You know, if you got, if you need help getting up, you need help getting up. It it does suck for somebody who's a little slower or impaired to to get up out of a seat. It's, yeah. not, it's not an easy thing, but you have to do your best to use your own seat to lift yourself yeah. up. Yeah, the armrests and your own seat back. Right. To, to but get the, up. that that's another problem because, like in most planes, you share an armrest with somebody. And if that if that person is using it, do you have the right to then like put your hand on that armrest too? That same armrest? You have to then you have to get past them anyway, yeah. probably. You know, you you're gonna have to uh excuse yourself yeah. in some way to, to to do it. I think the most egregious thing is taking yeah. somebody's seat back and yanking it. So Yeah. I mean obviously like he's not advocating for that. It's a simple like if you gotta put your hand on it, so, like to help yourself yeah. up, just be gentle with it. Uh, I think Doug Bowser doesn't like this person. No. Uh, in response, Chad Rogers deleted all of Bowser's comments and other replies he didn't like. However, by checking Bowser's profile on LinkedIn, you could still find evidence of the comment war. I want to know if they are related. Like, like, do they have, have they worked together or something? I, I, I need to know because I feel like there's I, more to this. That's what I don't understand. Like, how, like, first of all, who still uses LinkedIn? Yeah. And like, what was Doug Bowser? Was he treating it like Facebook? Yes. <laughs> no, he absolutely is. Oh my god. Also, what's he doing on LinkedIn? Yeah, he has a job. Yeah, he has a great job. Yeah. Probably not going to do much after that. Nope. He's probably going to retire after yeah. that. So, what's he doing? I don't I know. I mean, I guess hiring people. Uh A few days after Bowser's reply, another user responded with, "Well said, Doug Bowser. It got 9 likes." Roger replied simply, "Who?" and it got 0 likes and is basically the biggest loser move you could pull in an <laughs> online comment battle. It's true. Yeah. But I'm on Roger's side. <laughs> I agree with him wholeheartedly. Uh, I don't think Doug Bowser should have replied like that. But the guy deleted the opposing views is a douchebag move. That is a that huge douchebag move. Yeah, that is a douchebag move. move. That, that, yeah. He's making me... Uh, he's losing credit from me yeah. for, for, for that move. 
crate tables are attached to the frame of the seat in front of you. You're screwed no matter what you do. That's true, too. Yeah, yeah. but th- you have the understanding that when you're using a tray table, it's subjective to whatever the person in front of you is doing. Like, yeah. like when you're using a MacBook, especially a big one, yeah. on a flight, uh, like what those jet blue flights, uh, the tray table, uh, the the top of the MacBook screen, especially these 16 inch ones, the top fits right under where the tray table goes. Yeah. So if they move at all, it could it could crush your yeah. MacBook screen. Uh, so you just have to know where to position it so that yeah. that doesn't happen in case they move. Mm-hmm. Anyway. Now, the rest of the show is going to be Xbox closing all of the... We talked about that already We talked week, about right? it, yes. Yeah. We talked about uh, last week, Microsoft closed down like four Bethesda studios, chief among them, uh, Tango Gameworks, developer of the critically acclaimed Hi-Fi Rush, um, also games like Ghostwire Tokyo, uh, The Evil Within, their only Japanese studio, apparently, uh, and also Arcane Austin, developers of Redfall, but also... Uh, the critically acclaimed game Prey, and they also did a lot of work on the Dishonored franchise with Arcane Leon, the main studio. Uh, so it wasn't a good, wasn't a good time. Um, since then, a lot more news has come out uh, about like what exactly like is going on, like how it gets much sadder from here, and no questions answered. None. More questions, yes, arise. Yeah. Uh, what what do I want to? Which article should I start with first? Because there's, you there's like bits like and pieces of it. Well, I guess I'll start with uh, Microsoft says it needs games like Hi-Fi Rush yeah. after closing down the studio that made Hi-Fi Rush. Yeah, that blew my mind. Yeah. Uh, one day after Microsoft announced it would shut down four of its game studios, Matt Booty, the head of Xbox Game Studios, I'm not laughing at your name this time. I'm not happy with you. I held the town hall to discuss the division's future goals. We need smaller games that give us prestige and awards, uh, Booty told employees, according to internal remarks shared with The Verge. For some listeners on the call, it was a surprising goal. Microsoft had just shut down Japanese developer Tango Gameworks, which was coming off a small, prestigious hit like Hi-Fi Rush. So yeah, that's like that's, yeah, and, and trying to make a sequel. Yeah, yeah, that was uh, that's I'll I'll go right to the next article. Well, well, hold on, uh, there's a lot that was going on on Twitter around this time. Yeah, people were really not happy with Xbox. There was some uh, talk about whether or not Hi-Fi Rush counts as a smaller game, which I think is ridiculous to even have that conversation. I think, I think part of what was brought up was because like it co- it took four years to make. Five, I think. Four or five Four years. Four or five years, yeah. And therefore, like, it probably costs, like, a, like several million dollars yeah. to make. Like, it's not an insignificant, um, and not an insignificant amount of time or money to make that game. Right. But I think, you know... The game's $30. The game's $30. It, it's, it's clearly not, like, Halo. It's not Gears. Yeah. It's not Forza. It's not Fable, even. Yeah, and they know? knew that, and that's why they sold it at $30. Yeah. Exactly. That's yeah. that's still a smaller game yeah. compared to all those other ones. Yeah. You know, I, I would count count that as a small game. Ghostwire what, Tokyo would be a big game. Yeah. When I hear, and that's even not that big. Right. I think it's only like six hours long. Yeah. But it's a seventy dollar game. Seventy dollar game. Sixty. And you know, it was multi platform because it also yeah. came on a PlayStation. So when I hear smaller game, I mm-hmm. think less than fifty dollars. Yeah. You know, if it's more than fifty dollars, it's a big game. Yeah. Uh, that's my take on. it. And then also, yeah, they were making a sequel, apparently. They yeah, well, not a sequel. So, where is it? Uh, Tango Gameworks. Wait, no, hold on. Uh, Tango Gameworks was in the process of pitching a Hi-Fi Rush sequel and wanted to hire additional staff before its sudden closure. Uh, the report, which sheds additional light on the closure of Tango and Arcane Austin, claims that Xbox leadership felt that the overall studio system was spread too thin, with Xbox president Matt Booty reportedly liking it to peanut butter on bread. While uh, while little was revealed about the proposed sequel, Tango Gameworks was reportedly seeking to hire additional staff despite the departure of Shinji Mikami in 2023. Xbox previously called Hi-Fi Rush a breakout hit um, and our players uh, breakout hit for us and our players in key measurements and expectations. Tango wasn't the only studio considering a new game. Arcane Austin apparently wanted to return to its roots with a new single player immersive sim 
Um, Arcane Austin was famous for its work on Prey, which became a cult hit after a difficult launch in 2017. In a follow-up tweet, reporter Jason, Jason Schreier cr clarified that both projects were still in the pitching phase and thus considered to be years away. But still, they were like about to pitch brand new games yeah. that like could have like saved the ship. And instead, Microsoft was like, okay, close. Yeah, I was I said this last week. I think that uh they lost some of their big players over at Tango and uh they were they finished a game. Right. They were on their way to start a new project and Microsoft just saw that as an opportunity to get rid of them completely. Yeah. Which isn't the right move. No, but, not but, at all. Uh, that's just the way that they saw yeah. it. Yeah. It doesn't make any sense because everything that I've heard after like I I expected Microsoft or somebody at Microsoft to come out and give us a reason. Yeah. You know, like uh like maybe more people may, maybe more people left Tango than we were thinking about yeah. and they weren't going to work on the next game so they needed to find a place for the for the company to go and yeah. they're all in Japan so it was it would have been hard for them to relocate. Like that makes sense. But instead they're saying the opposite they're saying we need games like hi-fi rush i don't know why we close them yeah uh, <laughs> it's not making any sense matt booty uh released an internal memo uh to xbox studios saying the changes are, are grounded in prioritizing high impact titles and further investing in bethesda's portfolio of blockbuster games uh before noting that xbox is doubling down on bethesda franchises that are best positioned for success didn't he literally just say they need smaller titles yes so on <laughs> one on the one hand you're saying you need the big high impact yeah. titles that would imply fallout and elder scrolls and doom and wolfenstein like those games and then the next and dishonored day, and, yeah <laughs> and the next day saying like you know we need more games like hi-fi rush you know like you can't have both no correction you should be able to have both because that's yeah. the that's the sign of a healthy video game company. You know, you have like your one big title that you make all your money from and you use that to fund all the little titles that don't necessarily need to make a profit, but like are fun and quirky and like have audiences around the yeah, world. And, and uh, you make a lot of small titles because every once in a while, one of those small titles makes millions and millions of dollars. Yeah. It's a breakout hit and it didn't cost you much yeah. to do that. It's a gamble, but yeah. if you gamble enough, you'll win eventually. That's my take. Go to Vegas, spend mm -hmm. all your money. Um, there was a clip that was circulating on Twitter from the Double Fine documentary. Yes. Did you see that? Yes. I forgot what the documentary is called. Yeah. I forgot what game it was. It was for Psychonauts 2. Okay, it was for yeah. Psychonauts 2. Uh, that was around the time they got acquired by Microsoft. Yeah. And they had a, a big roundtable meeting with everybody at the company. Mm -hmm. And was it Matt Booty? It was Matt Booty. He's <laughs> Phil. What's is Phil? Phil Sha Schaefer. Tim Schaefer. Tim Schaefer. Tim Schaefer. Yeah. Is standing right next to Matt Booty, and they're talk. They're addressing everybody, and everybody's mm -hmm. got concerns about them being being bought out by Microsoft. And they're very upset because Microsoft has a really big. Uh, what would you call it? Non disparate? No, you would call it like a non compete. Non -compete. Yeah. So you, if you, anything that you work on that's game related is owned by Microsoft. Yeah. That means if you go home at night and work on your own game. If you publish that game, Microsoft owns that game. Mm -hmm. And the, as you can imagine, this studio that is run like an indie mm -hmm. band, uh, this studio is not happy that yeah. all of a sudden they can't work on their own little things, especially because that same week was Amnesia Fortnite, yeah. <laughs> the, the game jam that they do every year. Yeah. So they were literally doing a game jam that Double Fine didn't take any ownership of your yeah. game they're like if if a game here is a breakout hit it's yours to do whatever you want with not after after microsoft joined and and yeah. in the documentary you have the conversation with matt booty mm -hmm. saying no we own we own the game and yeah. people are fucking pissed at yeah. him and he's like i'm sorry that, that's just what it is. is like he's trying to like double back and like try to like he's saying all of the wrong things yeah and nothing's changed yeah uh speaking of saying all the wrong things that documentary is amazing that is very good yeah um sarah bond the president of xbox uh yeah president of the xbox brand was recently on uh the new president yeah right? yeah. yeah 
uh, was recently interviewed by Bloomberg uh, and was asked, one of the Shuttered Studios in particular just created a hit game. It did really well on Game Pass in terms of engagement and won a ton of awards. Shouldn't succeeding in that way ensure the future of the studio? And she... <laughs> That's a great question. That's a great way to phrase the question. Like, did not want to answer that question. Yeah. She didn't have an answer to the question. And so she just like tried to tap dance around it as best she could. One thing I really love about the games industry is it's a creative art form. It means that the situation and what success is for each game and each studio is really unique. There are no one size fits all for us. Doesn't help. That didn't answer anything. No, we look at each studio we look at each studio, each game team, and we look at the whole variety of factors when we face with making decisions and trade-offs like that. But it comes back to our long-term commitment to the games we create, the devices we build, uh, the services we ensure we're uh, setting ourselves up to be able to deliver on those promises. Yeah, they didn't say anything. Exactly. Like, it, it literally nothing. Is she admitting defeat? She's not admitting anything. Like she literally said nothing. That's that doesn't make any sense. Yeah. Say what you will about Phil Spencer, but he when Starfield did bad and people were were mad at him, he was like, "Yeah, we fucked up." No, that was Redfall. That was Redfall. That was when Redfall, Redfall. Redfall. Yeah. And the thing about that is, you know, they when all this when the the double fine uh, clip started circulating. Another clip started circulating from the Microsoft produced history of Xbox documentary that they made about when Lionhead Studios closed, the team that made Fable. They said, like, we acquired Lionhead this year. We closed them down 10 years later, and it was a failure for us. We looked at it like, why did it close? How can we ensure that it doesn't happen again? And it fucking happened <laughs> yeah. again. I just, I need a good answer from somebody here there to, is, that, that will make sense of it. Because it just doesn't make any goddamn sense. Nothing about this makes sense about it. Yeah. Like like you said last week, Redfall didn't do very well. That, you know, if, like, if a game doesn't do well, the, the studio closed. Makes sense. But you look at, like, everything else that Arcane Austin did. They worked on Prey with critically acclaimed game. Eventually, went on to sell really well. They were a support studio for Arcane Leon making the Dishonored games. That's a very popular series. So there was a reason for that studio to exist. They were working on a way to get back to what the games they know how to make and put out the games that they are famous for that could have worked with Microsoft's marketing muscle, but instead of even trying, Microsoft said, no, you're not getting a second chance. What I want to hear is that somebody at uh, Tango Gameworks and uh, Arcane, yeah. I want to hear that somebody was like, shitting on the desks and fucking throwing computers yeah. out the window and shit and they just had to get rid of them yeah. you know like i that, that's what i want to hear right. i want to hear that they had to fire a million people at the company yeah because they were just impossible to work with yeah otherwise there's no good reason to just no. close a whole studio no. like this i mean it's the tango game works that makes that that baffles me the most because yeah. that game was successful yes well they say it was successful yeah. They say it was successful. They're mostly saying like a kid did really well on Game Pass. But I think people are starting to see that like I, Game Pass is not clearly not a good business model. They're yeah. not saying it is. They're not saying it's not a good business model. But like everything we're seeing now is like proving otherwise. The subscriptions have plateaued. You know, everybody who wants Game Pass has Game Pass. Anybody who doesn't want Game Pass doesn't have Game Pass. Well, well they gave us so much value in Game Pass. And then the value started to plateau and it started to lose value now right. because but now like they've backed themselves in the corner because they have to like keep adding value to it they have to they made the commitment all first party games are going to be in game pass day yeah. and date and then That's they a, took that away or they, or they lied and everybody knows that that statement is a lie now well now part of the part of the whole downfall of this is they're having debates are they going to put call of duty in game pass day and date yeah because they own that now if you put Call of Duty in Game Pass, you're losing a lot of sales from Call of Duty because everyone's just going to get it on Game Pass. But that's potentially a lot of people who might not have gotten Game Pass otherwise. But by the same time, if you don't put Call of Duty on Game Pass, that is a bigger walk back of all first party games yeah. day and date than what Starfield was. Yeah. So they're in a lose-lose situation here. I don't know, because at one point they had to have determined that having 
the Game Pass sale is worth more than a one-time $70 fee. You know, like one time somebody paying $70 is worth less than trying to lock somebody into Game Pass for a year. It's like you look at like Netflix and all the the movie streaming yeah. services. When Netflix started, it was just library content. It was older films. And those they would buy the rights to relatively inexpensive and put them on their servers. When they started when all these companies started getting into trouble is when they started producing their own content for these streaming services. You know, if Disney Plus was just the library content, it would be profitable, but it can't be. It's got to produce The Mandalorian, a $100 million show. It's got to produce She-Hulk, a $200 million show. It's got to produce all these other like exclusive movies and TV shows just to keep up with the Joneses, and that's why all these streaming services are are unprofitable. I think the streaming services are unprofitable because they have to keep making more and more money every year. And they keep spending more and more money on it. So it's yeah. going to have to balloon eventually. These companies have to eventually be comfortable with not being more profitable than the previous year. Right. Like YouTube does that. YouTube uh, was just, they just reinvested themselves over and over again. And now they're at a point where not they can't get any more new subscribers. Mm -hmm. So like uh, they're kind of cool with, I mean, they're not cool. They're trying to find other ways to make money. But still, they're, they're more cool with plateauing than some of these other companies are because i guess the other companies really yeah. have investors and stuff and youtube is just owned by google and seems to just not really give a fuck yeah. but microsoft i would hope is similar like xbox is owned by microsoft which is already a huge company that's making money in a lot of other ways so i'm hoping that they see the value in xbox in different ways one of the things that i didn't put it in the keep but like there was a quote circulating around that somebody who worked at microsoft who worked at xbox said it's no longer xbox it's no longer the Xbox division. It's Microsoft gaming. Yeah. Which I think says a lot because even, like going back to the original Xbox, like it was a small team within Microsoft who fought against what Microsoft wanted to do with the system to make it a proper video game console. And it was that team that like really shepherded what the Xbox brand was all the way up, even through the 360 era. Now that it's more integrated into like the greater Microsoft conglomerate, it has to start adhering to, you know, the Microsoft way of doing things. You know, the Excels and the Word document yeah. and the Edge browser and all that, you know, nonsense that doesn't really work for video games. Yeah. You know, you have more, you know, tech business minded people as opposed to video game minded people running the show now. You know, Phil Spencer could say anything he wants about how he's like running, you know, the ship over there, but he is more directly connected to Satya Nadella than the previous administrations had been. So it's being run by as a tech company rather than as a video game company. Yeah. Again, I don't mind their focus on Game Pass. It's just that uh, they... They they seem to be they they bought up all of these game studios, mm -hmm. so they're trying to be more of a software company, which I think makes sense for Microsoft to, to want to do. But they are losing the value of Game Pass. Like like you're you're getting rid yeah. of these. You're you're buying studios to get rid of them. Uh, your whole business model is that uh, first party releases re release day one on your on on Game Pass, and then you're releasing them early if you pay more money yeah. like that's not the same thing that's a completely different thing and now one of your biggest games might not go on game pass at all yeah potentially yeah there's so many ways for them to make a lot of money off of fall of duty yeah uh i'm sure they'll figure out how, how to i'm sure they'll figure know. out how to fuck it up and on top of all of this the perfect dark development has been exceedingly rough this is what i'm most interested in yeah. from microsoft i want to i want to see this fucking perfect dark game this it is seems uh, like uh they're they're having trouble with it this is according to jeff grubb because of course it is uh the fallout from the layoffs and hearing more and more i've heard uh for years that perfect dark is in a rough state it sounds like it's in a very rough state and it doesn't sound like it's really coming together in any way since the game was announced in 2020 and even with crystal dynamics coming on board to help work on that on top of what gruff uh grub has said alex donaldson of vg247 added that the game's development has been uh pushing a boulder up a hill i've heard 
I have crazy stories about the development of that game. I have not put out in print out of respect uh, for the team really trying to push uh, that boulder up a steep hill, but my patience is getting pretty thin. Uh, he's got crazy stories about the development of Perfect Dark? Yeah. Jesus. I, from what I understand, uh, not the Coalition, the Initiative, that was the studio specifically made to make Perfect Dark. The guy running the initiative used to work at Crystal Dynamics, and apparently he he was not a good like developer over there. And like when things started to like fall apart, that that's when he recruited Crystal Dynamics to come and help him work on the game because he only has experience working on Chris, the Crystal Dynamics method of making games. Okay. But even still, like they haven't found a rhythm yet, and this game is just not coming together. That's sad i mean, yeah. I mean all we've seen is a teaser yeah. so we know nothing about this game yeah. and that was so long ago too. yeah so they've been doing a lot with this game yeah they're gonna fucking close uh crystal yeah. dynamics <laughs> <laughs> well crystal dynamics is owned by it was owned by embracer group i think they got sold i hope they got sold that's my, my one of my most anticipated games from microsoft yeah uh and uh no, I guess we won't hear anything. When is Indiana Jones coming out? Allegedly this year. Yeah. I don't know. Uh, fucking, uh, they're going to do their game shit. Xbox is going to have their game showcase in June, like around like E3 time, quote unquote. Mm-hmm. And I know that Phil Spencer is going to do an interview with uh, Ryan McCaffrey of IGN. And I've listened, I've listened to the podcast that he did like after the studio's closed. And, like, cause I, I've, I've listened to like IGN's Xbox podcast for like years and always he is like, you know, not to disparage him, but he has always been like the champion of that brand. You know, yeah. he did not sound like the champion of the brand anymore on the most recent podcast. So I would not be surprised if like he comes out with the hard hitting questions. And I hope Phil has the nuts to be honest and say yeah. like, we're fucking up. I don't know what I'm doing anymore. Yeah. You know, I thought one thing, clearly the industry is moving in another way. Yeah, I hope that they kind of uh, put him over the coals. And yeah. they, they had—I mean, that's where Phil Spencer uh, did the whole Redfall Redfall talk. He did it on uh, kind of funny, kind of funny yeah. podcast. Yeah. So uh, this is an opportunity for them to yeah. have some actual answers. Phil has been the head of Xbox for over ten years now. He came in during the Xbox One era when like their things were really bad over there, and he did his best to try to turn the ship around. And he said all the right things, but like now that we're in a whole new generation. Like, we're starting to see that, like, nothing's really changed all that much. A big problem during the Xbox One era was, like, there were no games. And now, like, during this era, we have all these studios, but still no, like, games. Yeah. You know, like, the games that are there, like, yeah, there's Starfield, there's Halo Infinite, there's, you know, the one Forza they did, you know, but, like, it's not enough. All these studios need to start making money. Yeah. For, for, for them. Or else they're going to keep closing them. hmm That's everything. Yeah, that's it. Oh wait. Quit of the week! Quit of the week! Quit of the week! Discussion <laughs> film says the new Lord of the Rings film is titled The Hunt for Gollum. Andy Circus will return as Gollum and also direct the film. And then the quote tweet is Gandalf holding a fucking gun. <laughs> <laughs> I saw that and I laughed. <laughs> Uh, there was a fan film called The Hunt for Gollum. It was re- it was created like 15 years ago and released on YouTube. It has like millions of views. And when the news broke that there was going to be a Lord of the Rings film called The Hunt for Gollum, Warner Brothers uh, issued a DMCA takedown. Immediately. Yeah. Immediately took it down. So They should have sent a nice email and been like, Ch- change the name, please. No. No, well, they have to because people are going to search for the Hunt for Gollum and they're going to get a fan film and think it's the real thing. That's that's not the creator's fault. They were there first. Okay, so you're saying what they should have done was not name it the Hunt for Gollum. I'm saying they should have not made this movie <laughs> <laughs> because I don't know if people realize this, but there are exactly three good Lord of the Rings movies. Anything after that has just been... A mess. You know when people say that there are no good Sonic games? Yeah. And that's an interesting take. I think there are no good Lord of the Rings <laughs> movies at all. That is an incorrect statement. Uh, yeah, no one wants to see Gollum. No. 
Do you think they saw like all the? That's the, like having a Jar Jar Binks movie. Do you think they saw all the Twitter discourse over the Gollum video game that came out last year and didn't understand that the discourse was because it was a bad game? I think and somebody like we need a Gollum movie. I think somebody really likes Andy Circus and wants to give him a no, movie. No, because it's it's a Warner Brothers movie. And Warner Brothers is currently run by an ass clown who doesn't understand how movies work. And all he knows is that Lord of the Rings is popular. Why don't we make any more Lord of the Rings movies? Well, you know, because there's only like so many books. Books are for nerds. We make movies for sexy, cool people. Books? What are those? Do a Lord of the Rings movie. Who made the originals? Get them back. I'm in the chat. I'm talking. Well, no, we're at last week's last Wolf Den podcast. podcast. Sorry, over on I got the a YouTube channel, youtube.com slash Wolf Den podcast. Got a little tiny screen on. I use it <laughs> every time I click on something on Discord. It opens the whole uh, on-screen keyboard, and it takes up the whole screen. Okay, because there's no screen real estate. <laughs> uh, John C. Selpo, uh, Seplo. From last week. Hey, Wolf Bros. Quick question about gaming backlogs. I'm about to enter college, but still want to enjoy my games and discover new experiences. Any tips on how to complete games and enjoy them over the summer? Thank you guys no. so much for the amazing podcast. I listen to them all the time. Here's your here's your tip. Here's your Wolf Den tip. Just don't ever beat the game. <laughs> I don't beat games anymore. You have to be comfortable with not uh, playing a game to completion. I... That's... I play a game for a few hours and then i go i get the gist and then i just <laughs> and then i just stop playing i forgot game. i wish i remember what youtube channel was but i actually watched a video of somebody actually trying to complete his ba- complete his backlog and he said you can't <laughs> he's t- he spent a year trying to do it and it's like you can't <laughs> yeah it's not worth it <clears throat> no there I, are just not there are games that are just not worth it i i would say give a game like 30 minutes and if it's not grabbing you in those 30 minutes just drop it but a problem i feel is that a lot of modern games take much longer than that to like really get into like an hour or two i say do not reward those games (laughs) with your time they shouldn't take more than an hour for you to get into if it takes more than an hour fucking stop playing you're an adult (laughs) god damn it yeah no seriously like your time is valuable you have to be comfortable not completing a game yeah um what was i gonna say oh i saw a tiktok about a guy who was arguing that the what that what's there's the amc pass where you get just unlimited movies. yeah well whatever i forgot what's called yeah uh he was arguing that is not worth the money Mm -hmm. because there aren't that many good movies out so you're going to mostly see bad movies yeah (laughs) and i kind of agree Mm mm-hmm and I cannot waste my time on bad games. Anymore. Right. YouTube channel something or other says <laughs> the long haired guy really needs to know what he's talking about. Really doesn't really doesn't know what he's talking 2023, about. 2023, a bad year for Nintendo? Last year? Yeah. Paper Mario looking bad? It's th- I said it was 30 frames, dude. Does he realize how much better it looks at the price of 30 frames per second? Or like it's better because it's 30 frames? That's a bargain. Do you think frames per second equals dollars? <laughs> Man, don't comment on Nintendo if you don't know shit about it or even care. You have no co- command of basic facts. Did I say 2023 was a bad year for Nintendo? They, oh. they had Tears of the Kingdom. No, they had Tears of the Kingdom and then fuck all else. <laughs> so I think that I might have said that it was a bad year in terms of game releases. because They right. just had Tears of the Kingdom and that's it. No, they had Wonder. Oh yeah, Wonder's great. <laughs> We do love one. I probably meant 2024. Yeah. And he no, you know what? I probably said 2024 and he means 2024. <laughs> I'm sa- I'm thinking he fucked up cuz it in the same breath he's saying that I said the Paper Mario looks bad. Why would I mention 2023 for talking yeah. about Paper Mario which is coming out this year? Um Paper Mario does look bad. <laughs> I lo- don't know what to tell you. It looks like a GameCube game. Yeah. And it shouldn't. It's a remake, <laughs> yeah. dude. It's a GameCube game that runs at half the frame rate. Sump Smash says, I played the beta test for Pokemon Go before it came out. Really? Had a great time for a couple weeks, got bored, and then stopped playing. By the time the full game came out and became a worldwide phenomenon, I was disinterested and missed the initial hype and regretted it later. That's 
talk we were talking about last week about how uh early access kind of ruins the the, yeah. the experience for people because mm -hmm. now you're playing uh, an unfinished game and then when the game finally comes out you have less of an incentive to like, yeah. play it again uh and he's saying he felt that way with pokemon go which is interesting because that yeah. game was a worldwide phenomenon and that game was like a phenomenon for a long time and it's kind of yeah. endless yeah you know you can pick it up where you left mm -hmm. off but he's saying he didn't feel it that's interesting uh borden with Bowie says uh i believe nintendo to be more practical than the majority of the industry they understand that the pandemic is the only reason animal crossing sold not a system seller but would do numbers i agree to an extent yeah uh i think they're extremely practical and extremely conservative with a lot of uh their projections with stuff mm -hmm. so uh yeah i mean i feel like it might be a sign of like you know they might take that as like hey there is enough of an audience for animal crossing you know, maybe their projections for the next one won't be as high as what uh, New Horizons was, but they'll say it'll still be more than what a, the previous Animal Crossing game. I think Animal Crossing probably sold a lot of Switch lights. Yeah. Just because, like, people are only getting Switch. Yeah. People are only getting that console for Animal Crossing, Animal Crossing yeah. at that time. So mm -hmm. uh, it would be an interest. It would be a weird audience if you launch a console with Animal Crossing. Mm-hmm. And then Eric over here says, Tony Hawk 3 plus 4 is probably the only game I'd buy day one. My cheap ass waits for everything to go on sale, but for Tony Hawk's 3 plus 4, fuck! I mean, that's a good deal, because you get two games in one. Yeah, and I think it's reasonable to wait for games to go to go on sale. Oh, that's all I do. Yeah. Like, I'm... There's nothing I'm... I like getting games immediately because I want to be able I know, to talk about it. I know, it. but like but I, I do understand the appeal of waiting because yeah. they all they go on sale really quickly. Yeah. And if you don't care about being in the conversation, you can get it yeah, for so much cheaper. Yeah, wait for on sale. Uh side topic, but like the Xbox 360 marketplace is closing down soon and they are having a fire sale right now. There's a lot of games on sale. Probably none you want to play, but like if you want to play the 360 version of uh, Far Cry 4. There you go. <laughs> Billy Gumbloid in the chat says, waiting for Boulder K3 to go on sale. That might take a while. Yeah. Because that is doing really well. Oh, Splinter Cell Chaos 3. 80% uh, off right now on a 60. That's a good one. That's good. Uh, Cubone says, Pirate Software talked about how Hades benefited from being in early access games on EA first. EA, it was EA. Oh, are you saying EA as early access or EA as the early access? Okay. Uh, where it was called bad and got to be retooled into the beloved title that released at first launch. That's interesting. Yeah, I think, I'd like to hear him talk about it because he's a developer, so I yeah. want to know what the benefit. Of oh, you mean his shorts access. don't just show up in your YouTube suggested feed oh, like all the time? They do, but not that one. That particular one did not just show up. Well. Keep clicking. I'm sure it'll show up. Um, I think his game has been in early access for a long I think time so, yeah. as well. Doesn't he have two? He's got the one and then, I don't know. Heartbound is the yeah. only one that I know of. I don't yeah. know. He's got another one. Uh, hey, bros, I'm going to Seattle in a few months for a con. Have you guys ever visited Seattle? One time I went there for a con <laughs> and it was good. Is that the only thing to do in Seattle? Yes. The con. <laughs> it's pretty small. Yeah. Um a lot of coffee like, places oh yeah seattle what was called like monorail or something that was my favorite it was really good uh any thoughts on the upcoming ein device ps vita looking ass device oh we should have talked about that oh there's another <laughs> ein not to be oh, confused right. with i and neo correct ein is working on one that looks like a playstation vita and I'd assume that that's also Android. It looks like it's going to be pretty small. Uh, I don't know. It's becoming really hard to keep up with all. I mean, it's always been hard to keep up with right. these. It's becoming even harder. What? Because, th because these companies that have expensive ones that are usually really nice are now also releasing multiple SKUs a year. Right. So it's hard to. to oh, I see. Them. Yeah, it is a PSP looking ass device. Doesn't have a name. No, it, it, they just all they did was show what it looks like yeah. and how much it weighs. Three hundred and twenty grams, which is apparently very light. Yeah. I don't know how grams work. 
and a mini LED screen. I only know 36 grams. How much coffee comes out of my espresso machine? Uh, my bad. The first EA should have been Epic. Oh, I don't know. Uh, LJ says he's adding endgame content and new language translations. He also tells folks to try the demo before buying as it gives you about an hour of gameplay experience rep representative of the whole game. I think every game should have a demo, a free demo available. Yeah. It's a better representation of, well, it's a, no, it is a better representation of what a game can it's be. It's just a foot in the door and I think it gives people more incentive to buy the whole game. Like, like, yeah, I'm usually on the fence about if I'm on the fence about buying a game, I'm not buying the game. Right. I have to want the game. But if I play the demo first, like the demo's free. Yeah, I'll play a demo. It costs yeah. me nothing. I'll I'll play yeah. it, and then if that hooks me, I'm fucking buying the game immediately. Well, I think like movies have trailers and games have demos. Yeah, like it. That should be the way it is. You know, a, a trailer for a game can only show you so much whereas a demo for a game can actually show you the gameplay experience yeah and that's yeah the most important part thoughts on the dragon quest 11 <laughs> 40 hour <laughs> demo sorry i was roman numeral on my tiny screen uh 40 hour demo excuse me i've never heard of that yeah that's a lot that's a big that's a lot of hours yeah that's a whole game's worth of hours Uh, Woods in the chat just talking about Seattle. We did we did see the uh, original Starbucks. Oh, uh, this is a huge line. <laughs> yeah, Starbucks. Just a star that's that's like the saddest thing. You expect to like go to the original and it's like a, a unique experience and it's just a regular ass Starbucks. I think they moved it. I think it was in one spot and then they closed it and then just opened it like a block away. I mean, I don't think the original McDonald's is there anymore. Like there's a, a spot down the road that they try to pass as like the original McDonald's. What's going on, on YouTube? How, how y'all doing over there? Uh, God. God, I hate this. <laughs> Backlog video was on Daryl Talks Games. Yes, that's what it was. Thank you, Daryl. Not different Daryl. Uh, Prime is coming out with the Lord of the Rings Rings of Power. Yeah. Uh, anybody watch that? No, I didn't think so. It, par it had, like, apparently, like... I heard it was good, actually. I heard that was pretty see, good. See, I heard, like, everybody was watching, like, the first three episodes and then stopped watching. Yeah, I guess. Like... You know, the I, I heard it was good, and then it probably yeah. didn't continue to be good. How's the Legion space experience on the go? It's not good. That's when you have to hit the... First of all, this is the button. You'd think it's the start button. Right. But the start button is here. Oh. <laughs> so you press that button, mm -hmm. and it takes a second, and then it brings up uh, all of this. Okay. And everything you do here takes a second. To do. Right. And it's not great, but it is what it is. Yeah. I will say, though, I have been running this in power saving mode on quiet. Uh, and it's been fine. Yeah. And it's at 36% battery. It, is, it was at 100 when we started the stream. So, I don't know what that means. It's been two hours. <laughs> I don't know. I'm late. Have you discussed about the family board's thread? Yes. Yes. And it has been added to our whiteboard of Switch rumors. Yeah. So, uh, here it is. Take a screenshot. And we will continue to add to the whiteboard uh, as we see fit. Uh, you watch Cheers, the TV show, and go to the bar in Boston, and you really feel lied to. Uh, yeah, the bar, the actual bar in Boston looks nothing like it does on TV. Uh, yeah, I could imagine. Same thing with the Seinfeld uh, diner. Yeah. They should redo the diner on the inside to look like. I don't know if they. I don't know if they can though, because I think the diner on the inside is like much like more compact than, the, like the one on TV is like very small. Um. Uh, I guess that's it. Did we get any notification? Uh, oh, we got Sea Soul. Thank you for the. If forty-three months. Yeah. 
And that's it. Thanks for hanging out, everybody. Thank you for tuning in. Thank you for watching. Thank you for chatting with us. As always, the Wolf Den Podcast is every Tuesday night at 8 p.m. Eastern right here on twitch.tv slash Wolf Den and youtube.com slash Wolf Den Podcast. If you can't make the show for any reason at all, we always put it up as an archive version over on our YouTube channel, youtube.com slash Wolf Den Podcast. So you can go and check us out over there on demand whenever you want. If you prefer to listen to us rather than watch us, you can do that as well because we're also an audio podcast on any and every podcast service such as Apple Podcasts, Spotify, YouTube Podcasts, Audible.com. But no matter where you get the show from, folks, please be sure to subscribe, rate, and review us because that helps with the placement on all those respective platforms. Take it away. Uh, No one's getting a raid today because if I had to do that on here, (laughs) I would rather kill myself. Uh, I'll have a video out on Thursday, hopefully, about me using this. And uh, I don't think I'm going to be streaming Thursday because I'm doing the Nintendo podcast. Ooh. The big inaugural 100th episode. Oh, so you kind of have to be there. Gotta be. <laughs> uh, that'll be at 3 p.m. Eastern on Thursday. Uh, and then that's it. Thanks for hanging out. See you later. Bye. Bye. Bye.